Hello, um, my name is Miss Valenti. I'm one of the English teachers here at Harris Academy Beckenham and welcome to your Year 6 Transition Day English lesson. I hope you're really excited to get started. I also hope you're really excited to join us in September. We can't wait to meet you. Um, okay, so as you can see from the screen, our big question that we're going to explore today is what would it be like to explore a strange new world? So I would like you to just take a moment, have a look at the images on the screen and have a think, what would it be like to see something you've never seen before, to explore something maybe in a, explore something you've never explored before, maybe to see the world in a different way, okay? So just take a couple of moments to have a think about that and then we will move on. Okay, so I want you to take those ideas now and I want you to get them down on paper. So the task I would like you to complete is, imagine you are an early pioneer of space travel. You are out in your spacecraft exploring our universe and beyond. You have a 30 second opportunity to glance down at the earth from above. And I want you to think about these three questions. What can you see? What does it make you think about? And what does it make you wonder? So as you can see on the screen, there is a table that I would like you to copy down on your piece of paper in front of you. Um, and there's an example to get you started. So it might be that you can see the shape of the different countries across the globe and you might spot different countries you recognise. For example, look, there's the USA. That therefore may, might sorry, make you think about actually how separate we all are. We all live on one planet, but we live in different countries across the world. And therefore, that might make you wonder, the world feels so big when we're on it, but from actually up here and way up in space, looking down at the, at the world, it seems like we're so small. So why do we all live separately when we're all part of the same world? So I want you to have a go at completing this table. What can you see? What does it make you think about? What do you therefore wonder? Um, please pause me. Complete this table and when you're ready to move on, press play again and we'll continue with the lesson. OK, so I hope you've managed to get lots and lots of ideas there. It might be that you um, spot a pattern in the clouds from looking um, up above, down below. Um, you might notice the contrast between maybe if it's at night time, all the twinkling lights on the on the planet compared to the darkness and the infinite kind of darkness of the of the universe beyond. So lots of really interesting things that you might have spotted or got down there. Fabulous. So let's move on. OK, so today um, we are going to be reading an extract from H.G. Wells' uh, The First Men in the Moon. OK, um, this was a text written in 1900s, so that's nearly 70 years before the first men landed on the moon. Um, so it might be a completely different kind of perspective to what we know now, or it might be exactly the same. Who knows? We'll have to see. So I'm going to read it through. And as I read, what I would like you to do is think about how the writer presents the wonder of the earth. So do you spot any words that stand out, um, any images that appear in your mind as you are reading, any language do you, language sorry used, um, and then we'll break it down together a little bit more, okay? So, with a click, the window flew open. I fell clumsily upon hands and face and saw for a moment between my black extended fingers our Mother Earth, a planet in a downward sky. We were still very near. My pilot, Cavill, told me the distance was perhaps 800 miles and the huge terrestrial disk filled all heaven. But already it was plain to see that the world was a globe. The land below us was in twilight and vague, but westward the vast grey stretches of the Atlantic shone like molten silver under the receding day. I think I recognised the cloud-dimmed coastlines of France and Spain and the south of England, and then, with a click, the shutter closed again, and I found myself in a state of extraordinary confusion, sliding slowly over the smooth glass. Okay, so, with this extract, we're going to do a task. So sometimes something that is very familiar to us can become unfamiliar when we look at it in a brand new way. So 
as mentioned, you were looking at how the writer presents the wonder of the earth. So I would like you to think, what words specifically does the writer use here to show us the wonder of looking at the earth in a new light? So similar to how we did in the previous task, um, if you copy and complete the table um, with a quotation, so that's um, a word or a few words taken directly from the extract and a technique that you can identify. So this might be the, what you've learned in English at school already, um, descriptive techniques. Maybe it's just an adjective or maybe it's personification like our example that I'll go through in a moment. Or maybe you notice the alliteration, the beginning of the same sound at the start of some um, of the words repeated. Okay. So for example, you might have picked out the phrase Mother Earth and you might have thought, okay, that's a lovely quotation and it's an example of personification. The earth isn't really a mother in a literal sense, um, but we, we reference it, we refer, refer sorry, to it as Mother Earth. And it might be the idea that the narrator here in this piece of writing realises from this distance that the earth gives everyone life and is like a caring parent to every living thing. Perhaps he feels frightened to be away from her love. So we've got there the Mother Earth quotation and this example of personification and the effect that it creates is that the world is almost like a caring parent and it makes us feel safe and secure just like a mother might. OK, so please see what techniques you can find, what quotations you can find and think about what effect they create. Why has the writer chosen to use these references? OK, so again, please pause me. Please have a go at that task and then we'll come back together and we'll share what you might have come up with. OK. OK, so I hope you've got on with that task well and enjoyed it. Um, it might be, and I don't know what you guys have found, but you may well have um, identified some of these references. So it might be that um, you have identified the adverb clumsily um, that the narrator uses. Could that possibly suggest that the narrator is excited, they can't control themselves, so they're falling against the window clumsily due to that excitement of what they can see? Um, you might have picked out the word heaven and identified it as a metaphor. What are the connotations of heaven? Maybe we could say that the world looks idyllic. It looks like a wonderful place um, from what this narrator can see. We've already talked about Mother Earth, so I'll go on to the next one. You might have picked out this simile, shone like molten silver. The idea that shy, something shining bright is really enticing, um, really beautiful. Um, and the silver reference, you might link that to jewellery and think about how maybe precious our Earth is. You might have identified the alliteration and this, um, also you might have known that it's sibilance, the repetition of the S sound sliding slowly over the smooth glass. So it finishes with the, the repetition of this S sound, the sibilance. What effect does that have? Does it all, is it almost quite a gentle sound? Does it slow down the pace um, of the writing? Does it therefore capture the the narrator's disappointment almost, and it reflects them sliding slowly down the glass, almost as if they want to carry on looking at the wonder that the earth is. So I hope you've come up with lots of fabulous ideas. You may well have come up with lots more there. The answers I've given aren't the, the be all and end all, but just some examples that you might have picked out. OK, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand over to you and you are going to do a piece of descriptive writing. So we've already identified some of these methods. We've mentioned personification when you give something human qualities um, that's an inanimate object. So you might talk about, I know there won't be trees that you can see here, but the trees waving is a nice example there. A simile comparing two things using like or as. A metaphor, a direct comparison. So um, the earth was a mother. So we mentioned the mother earth idea is also a metaphor. Alliteration, we've found some of that, haven't we? The repetition of the same sound. Onomatopoeia, I forgot to mention that previously. We had the click of the shutter, okay? So sound words. And again, building upon that sensory language, which we've looked at, what could we see? Um, but then you can add to that, what can you hear? What could you smell? What could you taste? What could you touch? So your job is task three. You are now going to write a description 
first imagining that you are leaving Earth and secondly, that you are arriving in a strange new world, okay? So you can um, expand on the extract we looked at. You are leaving Earth as well, okay? Maybe going up in a rocket and you are arriving in a strange new place. Is that a different planet? Um, try and apply the techniques we identified in the previous task and what I just talked you through. Remember, adjectives are really important as well. Your cho choice of verbs. Um, the language you apply here is really, really key to build an image in the reader's mind. So there's an example to get you started. Um, slowly, the Earth's pale surface drifted into view. Its blue surface was a cold azure, like glacial ice, cold, unforgiving, abandoned. So straight away there, you can see slowly, uh, we've opened with an adverb. Um, so it varies the sentence start there and it sets the pace. So the earth slowly drifts into view. We've got the description of the cold azure, so that blue color, but also that sensory language of cold. Um, we've got a simile like glacial ice. So that, does that present something really smooth, really um, maybe delicate, really beautiful. And also, as well as word choices, our sentence here with the three words, cold, unforgiving, abandoned, um, that's quite effective, isn't it? Because it's starting to create a tone of maybe actually it's not as kind of comforting this experience, it's quite an unnerving one. So please pause me. Um, I would aim for maybe two paragraphs, three paragraphs possibly on this. I'm really focusing. Um, actually, if you just do one paragraph, that's absolutely fine because your aim is to apply some descriptive techniques. So please do um, uh, use my example if you want to, but you can uh, do your own feel free. OK, so please pause me. Please have a go. It would be lovely if you um, wanted to email in um, any of the pieces of writing that you've done. That would be fabulous. We would love to see those. Um, but I'll give you a few minutes to write and then we'll come back together and finish the lesson. OK, so take as long as you like. All right. OK, so I hope you enjoyed completing your piece of descriptive writing. And let's finish off. Oh, no, my um, animations haven't quite worked here. They were meant to pop up individually. So we're going to come back to our big question. What would it be like to explore a strange new world? So hopefully we've got an idea of how we feel about this now. What would it be like? So it might be that you think it's or you find it an extraordinary experience, something you could never have imagined before. It might be that you find it beguiling, almost bewitching, so you're looking at the world in a way you never have before and you're almost entranced by it. It might be that it was a really insightful experience from your first activity. It might have made you wonder different things that you never had wondered before. Um, you might have found it slightly unnerving, so our example at the end did have a tone of unease, didn't it? So it might be quite a frightening experience to be so far away from something that you are so familiar with. It might have been wondrous. You might have seen the awe and the wonder in everything that you looked at and you came across. It might have been enthralling. You might have been really captured, really um, engaged uh, with what you were seeing and where you were. OK, so thank you so, so much for um, attending our lesson today. I hope you really enjoyed it. Just a little bit of a taster of what English might be like in September for you. OK, as mentioned, we cannot wait to see you. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day um, and have a lovely summer before we meet you in person. Bye.